Good morning. It's Thursday, um, April the 16th, and we are uh, looking forward to the end of this uh, chapter here for Easter. And uh, it's a, only a two-week uh, thing. Don't forget about your Bible reading guides. You're supposed to give me pictures of those um, for uh in order to be able to get an A in Bible, you have to have your Bible reading guide done. So you're going to read it. You're going to send me a picture of it each Monday with the signatures from the week before of each day that you read. So if you only read four days, that's fine. Put it in there. It's going to help. Um, it's better than a zero. And so you want to make sure that you do that. Um, today, we're going to give you the answers for the pretest. And so um, I'm going to do that first. And so go ahead and get your pretest out. If you haven't um, checked it yet, um, but make sure that you do that. Anyway, your pretest number one, the answer is Passover meal. Number two, his body and his blood. Number three, mocked. Number four, an example. Number five, prophesied. Number six is E, seven is B, eight is G, nine is C, ten is A, eleven is D. 12, true, 13, false, 14, true, 15, true, and 16, false. Number 17, the second, third, and fifth ones should be marked. Number 18, why did the religious leaders consider it blasphemy for Jesus to say that he was God? Um, basically, uh, this is the idea. Something to this effect, anyway, should be your answer there. It says, should include that blasphemy is giving God's attributes to something or someone other than God. Since they did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God, they thought it was blasphemy for him to claim to be God. And uh, if he wasn't God, of course, it would have been blasphemy, but he was God, and so that's why it wasn't. Number 19, Christians try to keep promises to obey God. What should a Christian do when he fails? We need to confess our sins when we fail. Number 20, um, why did you, what did Jesus do for you on the cross? Took our sins or took my sins or took our sins. You should, you should put, you took your own because you're talking about you. What did he do for you? Took my sins on himself, paid the penalty that I deserve to pay, Anything to the effect of Jesus dying for you on the cross or paying for your sins, especially the paying for your sins part, that would be um, a good answer. Um, shedding his blood for you so that you could have your sins paid for anything like that would be good. All right, those are your answers for the Unit 8 review. You'll take that test tomorrow. We will not have Bible then tomorrow. Um, uh, and also, don't forget, you can do your memory verse quiz today or tomorrow. Now, today we're going to have an application story. And so this will be uh, kind of a fun thing, and then I'm going to give you a little help on your, um, on your project sheets. One second. All right, and so continuing on here. This is called Never the Same Again. Matt turned over on his bunk, trying to go to sleep, but sleep was impossible. Here I am, he thought, with all these boys in this cabin, 13 of them, and it's very possible that none of them have trusted Christ. What should I do? Matt was spending his summer doing maintenance work at a camp before his freshman year of college. There were only a few weeks left in the summer, and the regular camp schedule was over. All the counselors and staff had gone home except for Matt. Now the campground was being used by the state patrol for training a group of sixth grade boys to be captains of the safety patrol. I'm just supposed to sleep here in the cabin with them at night, not tell them about Christ, Matt thought, staring towards the dark ceiling. Besides, I'm not very good at preaching like some guys are. I should probably just stick to cutting the grass and working with the horses. But he couldn't stop thinking about these boys who might never have a chance to hear about Jesus Christ and end up in hell. The next day, Matt talked to the camp director. Hey, it's not really right for me to give these boys the gospel, is it? He asked. I mean, they're just here for this training program. Go ahead and talk to them, the camp director said. The opportunity came the next evening. Before saying goodnight to the boys and turning off the light, Matt said, look, I had some... Something really great happened to me with God a long time ago. If you'd like to hear more about it, meet me behind the cabin tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. The next day, Matt, walk, Matt walked toward the cabin, not expecting any of the boys to come. To his surprise, a large group of boys appeared over the rise of the hill just before 2 o'clock. He counted them as they came toward him. 1, 2, 5, 9, 13. Lord, help me. I don't know what to say, Matt prayed. The boy sat down with Matt in a circle in the grass. His throat was dry and his hands shook a little as he opened his Bible. But he began to tell them about Christ. When he asked how many of them wanted to trust Christ for salvation, all 13 of them raised their hands. Wow, can this really be happening, Matt wondered. He explained the plan of salvation again just to be sure they understood. That day, 12 of them trusted Jesus Christ. 
The thirteenth boy wanted to be sure of his salvation. Though the, through the rest of the week, Matt and the boys gathered behind the cabin each afternoon, and he told them important things they needed to know about being Christians. You need to read your Bible and pray every day, he told them. In fact, you need to do that throughout the day as much as you can. And when you go back home, you need to tell your friends and families what Christ has done for you. You'll be so glad. When the next week came, a new group of boys arrived to stay with Matt in his cabin. Once again, he obeyed God, and God used him to lead many of them to Christ. By the end of the summer, nearly 50 boys had trusted Christ as their Savior, all because Matt did what he knew he should do. A few weeks later, Matt sat with his father in the car outside the college dorm. Dad, he said, what happened at camp has really changed my life. I don't think I'll ever be the same again. He glanced out the window and swallowed hard. I was going to study business in college. Then after a pause, he continued, you know how I am, how I'm scared to death to speak in uh, front of people. But, well, after getting to tell all those boys about Christ this past summer, I can't get excited about doing anything else. I think the Lord wants me to do that for the rest of my life. Matt decided to major in Bible at college, and then he became a pastor. Though all Christians should be busy telling others the gospel, God used that experience to direct Matt into his life's calling. I, I had a, a friend um, who had said that um, the highest calling for a person is to do whatever it is the Lord would have him to do. I don't disagree with that necessarily. Um, I think that we should look for any opportunity that God gives us to be able to help somebody to know Christ. I think we should look for any opportunity God gives us to do whatever it is he wants us to do. Um, I think a lot of times people focus on uh, things that are more worth worth more in this world than they are to God in, in, in the next world, in, in heaven, and the rewards that are there. And I'm not saying that you can't earn rewards in a secular job or in a secular world. You, you can, certainly, doing what God wants you to do. In fact, that's uh, often uh, a more difficult um, method of serving the Lord is being out in the world, doing the things that you're supposed to do when you have the pressures of the world. Um, but we need to make sure that we are listening to God as he's speaking to us. Um, this boy, Matt, um, I think I might know who this is, but I'm not positive of it. Um, but uh, this boy, I would say it's probably a true story. But this boy probably had um, understood uh, that he just needed to obey God. And then he trusted God, he asked God to help him, and then through that, he was able to build up confidence in the Lord. You think about Moses when he first um, was told by God that he was going to be um, the leader. And, and you know, when, when Moses was in Egypt before, how did he try to lead the people of Israel at that time? If you remember the story, he saw a taskmaster beating his fellow countrymen. And when he looked this way and that, as the Bible describes it, he killed the man and then buried him in the sand. Well, he didn't realize. he was His idea was to, do, um, to lead his people out by, um, by force and using his own power. Um, of course, that caused him to have to run. And where he ran to, you can't run away from God anyway. Um, he was running from Pharaoh. He found um, Jethro, who was his uh, father-in-law. Um, he became his father-in-law. And then um, he met God in this burning bush. And what did God have him do? Go lead those Israelites out through power. No, that's not what he did. What he did was he had them uh, lead or led them, or had them lead, uh, by what? By speaking. And what did he say? He said, God, you know that I can't speak well. You know that I can't speak well. Please, just send somebody else. Matt could have done the same thing. Send somebody else, God. I don't want to talk to them. And what did it say that God, uh, with God, what had happened? That his anger was kindled. And um, he said, don't you think I know I'm sending your brother to be the spokesman for you. 
See, God always gives us the ability to do the things that he wants us to do. Um, and he gives us the power. He gives us the ability, even when we speak horribly and we are um, uh, we have poor, uh, poor ability to communicate God to other people, he still can use it. And it's amazing the things that he does. Look at your... I just realized that I had stopped the video. I'm not sure where I had stopped it. Um, I had seen... Uh, uh, I had stopped it at one point <coughs> to answer text, but that was, um, I know that I had gone back and done the story. Um, so um, I will uh, do this. I will add these pages, um, 205, 206, and I had given a whole bunch of information about it, but um, there are seven verses there that you need to know about, um, that you need to understand um, to, to answer the questions. I'll let you look up the bottom three, but the first one, God created you and knew who you were when you were still in your mother's what? Well, in your mother's womb. Um, he knew all about your life. <clears throat> we know we are fearfully and wonderfully made by God, and God. we know that God does marvelous or, or wonderful works in our lives. And then everything you um, about you was written in God's book before you were born. Now, how does God do that? Well, the best way I can describe it is that he... Uh, shows a, um, uh, he, he looks at, at history like a helicopter looks at a parade. You have the beginning of the parade, and from the helicopter you can see the beginning. And from the helicopter you can see the back of the parade, the end of the parade. You can see anywhere in the middle, you can see what's happening in history during that time. And that, that's a good way to describe God's ability to see our past, present, and future. And so hopefully that will give you a better understanding of it. So these two pages are assigned to you. And that's it for today. Remember, there's a test tomorrow. Memory verse quiz, if you haven't done it today or tomorrow, uh, make sure you get that done. Um, also, make sure you're doing your work each day. Make sure you're getting your work done. Make sure you're getting your work um, completed each day. You don't want it to build up. You need to make sure that you do well this quarter um, so that for next quarter you can uh, be assured that you're ready um, without having to do any other kind of extra work during the summer in order to get prepared for next year. All right, that's it. Have a good afternoon, a good weekend.